Hello, Professor Ian. Uh, my name is Anne. Uh, uh, this is all of my group members' name. Sonan Tashi, uh, Kama Pili, and Sonan Topka. Today, we would like to be present about uh, age boarding Australia where you big into the Dubai. Yeah. Let's, uh, Japan and Australia are, are the biggest producers of the world UV in the world. And the world UV, because of, it has very high proportion of the unsaturated fats that that's why and then it is support to uh, for healthy living that's uh, this is why we choose this product and then what you be uh, sale will be uh, increase the net income nine US 9.2 billion in the global in 2023 and then it has also have the variety of beef in they are Google, Pure and F1 Cadre, one of the famous uh, chef in the world, recommend that why white you beef it different than the other other beef because of this be uh, when when you taste in this beef, uh, you can feel like heaven and earth. Let's move into another slide. Why we choose Dubai? Because all Dubai have the most liberal trade regime and it attracts the strong capital flow across the region and then this, uh, Dubai is the 30th largest economy in the world and then number two in the middle East and North Africa and then it has also have the higher proportion consumer level of the world UB and then it's, uh, it, it is also include about celebrity scourge and the billionaire and it has a strong capital resource there uh, and then it is very uh, easier to transport in, like as they have the many port like as in here, Fremantle port. Uh, uh, the UAE beef consumption is 80 times more than growth in every, uh, average per capita. And then it tends to reach the 973 billion US dollar. And all beef are the halal certified. That's why. Uh, uh, who are who are non-religious and religious? Uh, they can be eat, eating beef in the uh, UAE, and then uh, UAE have the uh, collective collective uh, culture. That's why they are very uh, They are very uh, very eager to be explore to the another thing, and then they, they they have a strong culture for tasting the food. That's why we we. If we do this product to UAE, we can be successful. We can be definitely successful uh, for the business. Uh, I will. I would like to introduce you. A next slide into my friend Kamatili. Yeah. Hello, Professor. Uh, thank you. Next, we are entering into Dubai. There are five key points to start a business in Dubai. Number one, it's get to know and understand Dubai. According to the World Bank, Dubai is one of the easiest place to start a business. And there's one important, uh, one reason why all the foreigners, they want to do business in Dubai is because they give 100% tax-free on corporate, corporate incomes. And there's another reason why they do business in Dubai is because there's very less paperwork while you start a business. And second is company registration. While registering a company in Dubai, you need to have a you need to have a corporate uh, you need to have a local partner. They are called as corporate sponsors. And to get a corporate sponsors, uh, you need to hire a corporate consultant who will easily find you a very suitable corporate sponsors, which is local partner. And this partner, they will have 51% of the shares just to safeguard their decisions in the board meetings. And the other one is finding a reasonable business property. Uh, in Dubai, there is, a, there is a property called free zone, and that free zone can be leased in a very reasonable price or it can be cheaper. The fourth one is complying consent law. We must we must respect and understand the law of Dubai. So it's it's a very important key points also. And lastly, uh, before you start the business, you need to apply for the work permit, and we are good to start the business. The next slide, please. 
And in these slides, I'm trying to promote our product, which is Wagyu beef. And in the, in the promotion, there's a chicken telling us not to eat him, but the Wagyu beef. Uh, next, my friend Sunam will present these slides. Uh, hello, Professor Ian. Uh, my section, I'll be talking more about the cultural aspects of doing business uh, between Australia and uh, Dubai. And uh, to start off, a few of the cultural differences uh, in terms of communication is uh, that uh, Dubai, UAE, uh, they culturally, uh, English is uh, not their, uh, uh, their preferred language. The Arabic uh, is their, uh, the language that they speak there and uh, culturally, uh, even in the public sector, especially in the public sector, 80% or more of the employees will uh, be Arabic speaking and non-English speaking uh, Back from the non-English speaking background. So it is always uh, better uh, for any team or any business who's trying to enter their market to always have a local uh, yeah, local language speaking uh, uh, team member in your team. So you uh, making sure that uh, no, uh, uh, no uh, feelings are hurt uh, in terms of uh, communi uh, communicating with them. Also, uh, small talks is very vital to establish trust uh, when uh, dealing with uh, uh, the UAE people. Uh, small uh, talks uh, means that uh, you know whenever you are addressing or whenever you're talk, uh, initiating a conversation with uh, your uh, counterpart, it is always good to start off with uh, asking how they are doing, how uh, uh, how their families are doing. Uh, but also keep in mind that uh, not to ask about their female uh, relatives because it is not culturally accepted that you talk uh, or ask about their, uh, the female members of their family. <coughs> uh, to talk about some of the behavioral aspects, uh, punctuality is very important in uh, most society, but uh, in UAE, uh, punctuality is uh, you know, not taken so seriously. It's more relaxed when it comes to timing. Uh, uh, they say that, uh, you know, uh, they can't, uh, it is very rude for, for them to wait, but uh, it's not rude uh, if you make them, uh, no, I mean, it's rude for you to make uh, them wait, so it's, uh, punctuality is not taken so seriously in their culture. Uh, when it comes to dress code, uh, very conservative, uh, Dubai is, uh, is, uh, is more, uh, way more conservative than, uh, than Australia. Uh, also, the handshaking culture uh, in the UAE, there is no handshaking culture uh, uh, as opposed to uh, Australian uh, businesses, how they run. So when you meet your counterpart, you always ensure that you shake their hands and you greet them. But uh, in the UAE or Dubai, that's not the culture there. So you have to ensure that uh, you don't do that. Uh, uh, you should also know that uh, any form of alcohol is not permitted. And, uh, even in the law, there's it, 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 serious consequences. The next slide. Uh, these are the, some of the uh, do's and don'ts, uh, business etiquettes, uh, which uh, between, uh, in, in, when especially when you enter the Dubai market. You show uh, the, some of the two points are uh, always make sure that you address the, every MRT counterpart with appropriate titles. Also make sure that uh, you dress uh, conservatively. You don't uh, affect uh, any or you don't uh, uh, you know, uh, insult uh, their culture by wearing uh, something which is not accepted. Also, make sure that you accept every invitation uh, given to you by your counterpart. Because in the uh, Dubai culture and UAE culture, uh, is they, they always uh, make sure uh, you know did you get invited. They always invite you over for meals or you know uh, to uh, to a restaurant. Uh, so, you know, for you to say no uh, in their culture, it's always regarded as disrespect. So you have to ensure that you don't hurt the feelings of the other, your counterpart. Uh, some of the don'ts is uh, expect a one-on-one -on -one meeting to only include yourself and the other person. And their culture, they always uh, make sure that they bring in uh, the, some of their uh, employees or some of their other partners along with them to the meeting. So you should always expect, uh, you know, you shouldn't, be expecting a one-on-one -on -one meeting. You should also expect there's going to be people uh, in uh, for that meeting. Also, assume that the person who speaks the most questions uh, in the meeting holds the most uh, responsibility. Like, uh, for example, in Australia, in a meeting, 
you will always uh, ex uh, you'll always think or expect that the person who is speaking the most is uh, is either the CEO CEO or a top level manager of the company, but it doesn't is not the same in uh, Dubai in in their culture because <coughs> in their culture not all people who speaks a lot uh, is supposed to be the CEO or the top level manager. So you have to keep that in mind. Uh, next slide. Here I'm talking about the offsets uh, five dimensional uh, aspects uh, between Australia and the UAE. In Australia, as you can see, there's high indulgence, high individualism, 80% of the population is of the European heritage, low power distance, and population of 23 million. Whereas in United uh, Arab Emirates, they are ruled under the Sharia law. They have low individualism. That means that uh, they are more of a collective society and uh, they depend on each other. There's high power distance, high uncertainty avoidance, and 1.4 emeritus and 7.8 expatriates, expatriates, workers in there. Uh, these are the cultural aspects, uh, some of the cultural aspects between uh, Dubai and uh, Australia. And the next uh, part will be delivered by the friends. Huh? Hello, Professor Ariel. I'll be talking about the challenges of doing business in Dubai. Uh, the first one is the difference in working hours. Uh, the uh, working hours are different uh, in Dubai, where in uh, most of the offices they start around 7.30 in the morning and uh, finish by about 3 p.m. in the evening. So again, uh, during Ramadan, what happens is the days have been shortened by almost about two to three hours. Um, second is the language barrier. Arabic is one of the uh, Arabic is uh, the official language, but English is widely uh, widely used in the business. But in terms of doing paperwork, everything is written in Arabic language. Um, third is adhering to culture. The local culture is tied with the Islamic traditions <coughs> and uh, the followers, the strict followers of Sharia law. The business communication follows a very formal approach and courtesy is highly prized. The Dubai population is generally warm and friendly and is, and is a society rated uh, and is a society rated as one of the safest in the world. Foreigners are at the same time expected to, expected to um, show the same amount of courtesy and uh, respect for the religion. Um, another one is the relaxed time approach. As compared to the West and European countries, the approach towards time is more relaxed in UAE in general. So since uh, the time, since they have got the relaxed approach in timing, so while doing business, we don't really have, to, we sh shouldn't expect uh, the, the the same amount of uh, the timeliness. Next please, next slide. Hiring local employees, uh, setting up while setting up a business in Dubai, um, one one would need a foreign company to hire local talent to run its operations. For this, the UAE has a particular set of guidelines in which the international company like ours needs to follow. Uh, employee management. Uh, one of the key challenges of doing business in Dubai is, in, uh, is, is to manage the local workforce efficiently as per the local laws and companies uh, and compliances. Um, employees, employee management can be difficult due to difference in culture, language and administrative approach. Um, and lastly, the ownership of uh, company. The foreign entity needs to share its business ownership if it wants to set up its operations in Dubai. So be it entering the market via local distributors, partners with local business, franchising or op uh, opening a, a, a representative of office, the foreign entity also needs a local partner at the same time. Uh, the last slide. Okay, so what we have done is we have um, figured out three of the most significant challenges and its solution. The first one is adhering to uh, the culture. So that can be done through, um, through uh, cross-cultural training. So cross-cultural training tends to assist and the expatriate, expatriates to, to uh, to enhance the knowledge and skills, which in turn would help the expatri expatriates to practice practice in uh, in an unfamiliar host country. Um, employee management can be can be um, 
mitigated by respecting the, the views of the local employees. And the last, the language barriers. The language barrier can be done by hiring, uh, can be uh, mitigated by hiring bilingual employees and local trusted partners. Um, thank you very much for listening to us.